War ravages, destroys the vanquished opponent as well as all aspects of normal life. When Syrian Democratic Forces entered Raqqa two years ago, backed by international coalition airstrikes, they wanted to eliminate the Islamic State. Three months of war that devastated the city heralded the beginning of the end of the so-called caliphate, but only the start of a long road to defeating the terror group's ideology. The ruins of Raqqa stand as a reminder of just how brutal the war against Daesh really was. Entire buildings were flattened to the ground and thousands of people are thought to have been killed here. Parts of the former capital of the Islamic State are now reduced to rubble. The sleeper cells are still active in the region and so the question now is, what is left of the Islamic State? <laughs> The answer is plenty. After the fall of the group's last bastion in Syria, suspected ISIS fighters were imprisoned. Their families placed in what amounts to internment camps in the northeast of the country. Our hall is the largest, now holding nearly 75,000 people, including women and children from over 50 countries who camp authorities say continue to live by the rules of the caliphate. You would like to go back to Daesh? Yes, please. Yes. Camp officials speak about torched tents as a form of punishment inflicted on those perceived as not following the laws of radical Islam and more. In July, a video posted on social media purportedly showed a black flag of Daesh being hoisted in the camp, very close to where we are now allowed to enter. To try to understand them, we asked to meet the women of our hall. In the so-called annex, the section where foreigners are kept, the vast majority didn't accept to be filmed. Off camera, they acknowledged some here still hold on to ISIS ideas. Others, however, say they are looking for a way out. M from France is one of them. She agreed to give us an interview asked us not to disclose her identity for fear of what could happen if she is allowed to go back to her home country. M tries to explain, but knows it will be hard for people to understand her choices. I know that I to be there. I could have out before, but I didn't do it. I was scared. I didn't want to go to prison. I didn't want to lose my son, I didn't want to lose my wife. And then we don't know what to do. On ne sait plus quoi faire et, et c'est vrai que quand on rentre dans cet état islamique, après on n'est pas libre de nos faits et gestes. On, tout le monde suspecte tout le monde. Euh, donc quelqu'un qui arrive et qui dit après je veux partir, ça se passe pas comme ça. How to sort offenders from victims is a question many countries are still grappling with. M's future is uncertain. While most of Europe turns its back to nationals who joined ISIS, security analysts and experts on terrorism wonder if this could fuel the hatred and the ideology the West has been trying to suppress. With ISIS cells still active in the region, what happens in these camps may help define whether the war against the terror group has really been won. Anidis Borges in northeastern Syria for Euronews.